Hey everybody, how you doing? Brother John here, Modern Judaism. Uh, this is pretty much just a vlog, rant, or whatever you want to do, or wherever it takes me how about that. Uh, first, I want to say happy holidays uh, to uh, my atheist friends out there. Yes, it is April Fool's Day, and uh, as most theists and fundamentalists will say, um, a fool says that there is no God. So, happy holidays, <laughs> my atheist friends. <laughs> Joke, joke, joke. <laughs> um, I also wanted to thank everybody um, that came out to God Talk. We had really had a good time. Was it as good as the le the first two times, well, the last two times that I was mentioned before? Maybe not, but it was pretty good. It was good to see some uh, people in there. Um, it, we had a good time. Um, and you know what? This uh, it brought to mind some things. I was thinking about some things, and, um, um, you know, even when I was a Christian, um, there were, I was still dealing with battles, I still had to deal with my shortcomings, I dealt with other people's shortcomings, um, and, you know, there's all good and bad in everybody, you know, we all have weaknesses and strengths. And, you know, stepping out of the forest and looking into the trees now. And uh, when I'm in chat rooms and seeing uh, Christians and theists and stuff like that, it always seems to be that there's this promise, you know, that your life will be better. I mean, that's pretty much the thing. Your life will be better as a Christian. You know, your life will be more fulfilling. Um, ultimately, you'll be saved from the eternity of torment of hell. You need your sins washed and forgiven. You know. Um, I think of something, uh, when I was a Christian, listening to some preachers, and they used to come down on us the way some Christians would be, and act, and it was like, they would say, you know, the message that a lot of Christians bring, give to the world, and I, 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 say it's true, is come to Jesus and be as miserable as I am. It's kind of like, you know, you visit a church and you get the open arms. Hi, welcome, blah, blah, kiss, kiss, kiss. We're so glad you're here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you'll hear a message. You might feel condemned, convicted, and you feel you need to accept Jesus, and you do, right? And everybody's like, yeah, you accepted Jesus, praising God, the angels are singing, you know. And then before long, you will know that, before long, that now it's time to work for God. But it's not about works, no. But you need to get involved in ministry. And the whole hamster in the cage starts. <laughs> The hypocrisy starts. And then you start comparing yourself to other people. And people comparing you to them. And and there's all this, you know, like I've said in my other video, the little baggages, you know, the little things, you know, that you seem to, I gotta, well, you, you know, you come to church. You go to church. You're a new Christian. You're looking at other Christians. And you, you kind of think, well, maybe, you know, I have to be more like them. But yet, they're putting on a front as well. Good part of the time. I'm not saying that they're not good-hearted, well-mannered, uh, moral Christians. Not at all. I guess the whole point of my rant here is that I don't see any difference between Christians and non-Christians. You know, sure, I was going to church. I might not go see somebody and, uh, yeah, I might not see him in the bar. But, you know... I, I know Christians, to this day, they're Christians 20-something years, and they're still dealing with a lot of the same hang-ups they've always had. Stuff of holding on to the past, holding on to resentment, uh, what my parents did to me, and all this other stuff. And I just think, I'm saying, did you not reach a maturity level where you can let these things go? Does not, has not the scriptures, the spirit 
given you any peace in these matters? I just don't get it. You know, you know, an impact. If if Christians want to be uh, noticed and want to make a good name for Christianity, well, God damn it, let's see some miracles. <laughs> you know, I think that was the kind of thing that proved if you know your claim of Christ being God and whatever. This kind of, you know, according to the Bible, I mean, this is what drew the people in. It was the miracles. It was the, ah, oh, wow, he must be from God, you know? And did not Jesus say that you would do these things also? If not even greater degree? I mean, there are so many Christians now. You would think this thing would be like commonplace miracles. But it's not. We see a lot of phony preachers on TV. We see unverifiable miracles, but nothing verified. Uh, like Ross W. said, <laughs> um, I like to see somebody resurrected from the dead. And not just after eight hours or, you know, <laughs> or a day. And maybe after three days. Who knows, you know? Now, of course you know I'm a deist, and I do not negate God. But I don't dictate to God what he should be doing. And I know you're going to say, oh, we don't either. But, I mean, if you're going to go by scriptures and the promises of, like, praying in Jesus' name, or where two or more are gathered, and, you know, all this stuff, if, if you ask anything in my name or according to his will, is it not the will of God to heal people or raise people from the dead? I, I don't know. And then we'll make this excuse when it doesn't happen. Well, it wasn't God's will. A baloney. Baloney. Because the Bible is your guideline, right? That's supposed to be the will of God. So, I mean, if you really want to set apart from this world and really show a light, I really would like to see some miracles. Because I haven't. You know? I know a young lady in a pastor's house. Lives in a pastor's... The pastor's... Um, uh, Daughter-in-law. She's got MS, lupus, and a whole bunch of, of, of physical problems. She has three kids. A husband who's working his butt off... She's confound to the bed for days at a time. It puts a lot of strain on the family. Healing? No. I know another woman in the church, Assemblies of God Church. I know her for 20-something years. Her and her husband, I bumped into them uh, here in PA. All right? About a year or so ago, she got into a car accident. Drunk driver. Hit her. She's paralyzed from the waist down. Her husband's got to do the housework, the cooking, plus work a full-time job. Healing? No. And they're in a church who believes on this big time, the Assemblies of God. Where is it? You know? So this is my frustration. Let's see, I'm not, where's the healings with the miracles? Do I believe in a mighty God that can do these things? Yes. But I'm not going to preach something and say, well, you know, you'll have a better life. You know, you can get healed of all your hurts and everything like that. And say this God's going to do all this when maybe he's not. Could it be that the God of this universe just wants us, yes, to live by our choices? We, we... I, you know, I don't know how it all goes. <laughs> I really don't. I don't I'm not going to pretend to. But we have choices. Human, I see humans evolving in, in knowledge and learning. And maybe God is just stepping back and, you know, I'm not going to intervene so much. I want you to experience this life, you humans. I want you to do it. And um, I, I, I don't know. But I don't think he intervenes as much as people would like to think or claim because 
they're becoming empty words. You know, I met a lot of people who are good people. And just because someone does a really nice act, I'm not saying to myself, wow, he must be a Christian. No, they just choose to do good. People can be good and choose to do good. Whether they're Christian, atheist, deist, Hindu, I don't care. Because I think that the law of reaping and sowing is in effect. I think that people are brought up to do good because good goes to being, to having a fulfilling life. I'm out of time. That's my rant.